brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. Suds, suds, it's time for more suds. Hey everyone, here we are yet again for another suds segment where good beer meets me. Mm. Mm. Questionable radio. Mm. With me today at the table is good old boy Dave. I tell you, you don't get no respect at all. Nope. Not with that. Nope. Uh, nope. <laughs> nope. Nice. Nice try. Also at the table is good old boy Caperton. Hello. 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 And good old boy Sparky. I made it here all by myself. Good. We are so doing? proud. Good. And good old boy Drew. Good day. And I'm good old girl Stop Juliana. making me feel bad about my voice, Drew. <laughs> it's true. I feel like I haven't even gone through puberty yet, man. You kinda, Can you dial a little yeah. dork into that, Some man? Of my, Some Hi, guys. There How are you, you today? There you better. go. Thank you. Oh. There we go. Some right, of my man. pubic hair recedes every time Drew speaks. Same here, right? You know? <laughs> Just, I can't help goes right back makes us all feel inadequate. Okay. Oh. Oh. Poor boys. because he's overly adequate. <laughs> I know. <laughs> overly. Super, <laughs> super adequate. True story. Mr. <laughs> adequate. So this sud segment is brought to you by... Stuff and Things. Do you like stuff? Do you need things? Well, come on down to Stuff and Things. We have more stuff than anyone, and our things are competitively priced. Stuff and Things, Things and Stuff, Stuff and Things and Stuff and Things. Now, with more stuff. There. So today's episode is all about going back in time. The Wayback Machine. And I don't mean like the wrinkle in time or anything. I mean just... We're talking like flux capacitors or like... Yes. How's this? Oh, rest your soul battle and wrangle. Yes. Yeah. Oh. So we're oh. going to... Yes, yes, yes. Um, So we're going to be tasting some beers that are modern takes on old recipes and old styles. Mm. This should be pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we're going to taste old style? Mm. Oh. I was oh, not prepared for that. Yeah. Oh, we that one went out of the park. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Style. That's uh, another that show was... for another time. Oh. That's our Chicago show. And another group yeah. of people. Maybe. Well, there'll be Malort. Probably. Isn't Chicago a big old style town? That yeah. is the old that style. That is the town. old style. Yeah. 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 <coughs> they, they, they. True story. Yeah, yeah yes. that is. It happened that is. there. Lots of signage. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Lots of signage. Explains so much. It, yes. Well, old style and the Cubs. That there, and Malort. There you go. Malort. Oh. <laughs> Not so much signage for Malort. <laughs> Not so much. No. You got to know. You got to well, know. They put uh, those stickers in front of their houses. It says Malort on premise. It kind of keeps people away. It's really like kind ADT. of a big thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, Better than the rest of us. Yeah. yeah. It just keeps people right out. It's a right time. time. Like, ah, not this place. <laughs> yeah. Let's go raid somebody else's. All right. So, good old boy Caperton, why don't you give us today's special lineup? Ooh, me. Okay. Uh, we're starting with four beers from Zebulon Artisan Ales. We will have their. October beer, circa 1750. We've got dates on some of these, by the way. Um, the Arctic Ale, circa 1880. A little while later. Did they use Best Buy dates in 1880? No, they used the Julian calendar or some secret code-like mm. anchor that nobody can figure out. Gotcha. Yeah, no regulations back in yeah, those days, right, Dave. Right. It was it Wild was, West. Yeah, it wild, was, wild West. Whatever, whatever you want, drink it whenever you want. Yeah, probably best right. to drink it soon. Yeah, probably. probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you weren't. Really promised a tomorrow back in those days. So. <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> it is. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Correct me here. Kotz. Kot. Kot. Kotbusa. Kotbusa. No correction needed. Kotbusa. I don't even know if it's German, right? I'm, I'm giving it a Weird. German. It is now. Answer. It is, it is yeah. now, damn it. It better be. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> the foolishness is not over. And last from Zebulon Artisan Ales. I'm making this a long time. They're Grotsky. <laughs> Gesundheit. Gesundheit. 
Gretzen. Yeah. I think that's a Polish. Polish. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wayne Gretzky's yeah. beer. Yeah, it's right. true. <laughs> this is named after Wayne Gretzky's beer. We're not done. I got a lot it is of, now. <laughs> there's a lot of beers. I got to keep right, going. Sorry, sorry. Scratch <laughs> Brewing, Jester King Brewing, uh, a Stein beer that was collaborative. Scr- from Scratch Brewing alone, solo, their Kvass. I've got mm. that one. Um, another Kvass, a second Kvass from a collaboration between Still String Brewing, Fanta Flora Brewing, and oh, is that it? It's that called, is, yeah. that's that it. is it. Yeah. And it's called Handsome Angeline Piedmont Style Kvass. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. That was you like a mouthful. You nailed it, dude. It's a mouthful. Very good. Another Kvass. And last but not least, possibly. Um, or Possibly. Possibly. Uh, the Freigeist Kissmeyer, it's a Danish, German, Greek collab here. Don't forget Solo. Yeah, Solo. Solo from, f- the, they're, they're the Greek folk. And ca- anyway, <laughs> it's, a Gruet, it's called Gruet Vibration. I see Dark what they did German, there. German, Danish, Greek collaboration. So very good. There. Very good. good God. Very, good very, God. very, very good. Thank you. Thank you. I feel better. You made it, buddy. Now that you got that all out. Looks like Um, we made it. (laughs) Yeah. So, good old boy Drew, would you please do us the honor of the Suds ratings? We'll be discussing and rating these beers with these Suds ratings, plus our signature belching sounds. Here are those ratings now. One, that sucks. Give me anything but a bud. (laughs) That's not a burp. (laughs) Two, was that a belch? Ah, what a relief. Three. Four, a body should really not make that sound. Five, listen to that hang time. Give me another. Thank you very much. So now, before we get to the beer, it is time, everyone, for the kudzu report. (laughs) Here we go. Howdy, folks. This being the third installment of the kudzu report, and I appreciate the sip suds and folks, smokes folks, thank you, for uh, giving me a platform here to give you folks the 411 on the green tsunami, which creeps up to 12 inches per day. And continues that creepage despite our continued strategy of abatement. And I look, that's, I understand. It's depressing. It's a heavy load to unpack mentally. But believe me, I understand the fear and frustration this green demon can cause. So this week, we're breaking a little bit. And I'm not going to give you reports of encroachment, but a report of hope and solidarity, folks. That's right. Let's take solace in this. According. To recent media reports right here in my home state of Tennessee, we are organizing, state officials, in fact, are organizing a kudzu killing spree. That's right. Our state parks this summer are asking for volunteers to help eradicate the evil vine by conducting hands-on removal of trees, vines, and flowering plants, which are invasive and we got to get them out. We got to get them out. That's all I'm saying. So you're saying we have to master abatement? We have to master abatement. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Wow, I just that's got us kicked off the air. It did. It did. <laughs> okay, you're going to do. Volunteers will learn tactics that they can take to their own green spaces back at home. Yes. And eliminate the green scourge from their own premises. With this free training and tactics to be provided by invasive plant experts. Whoa. So fear not, folks. All is not doom and gloom in the kudzu battle. Forces are rallying, so relax and have a beer and join the fight. This has been the Kudzu Report from good old boy Caperton. Thanks till next time. That was like the most valuable piece of information Jeez, you'll Louise get in this entire show. I feel, I feel like long. we did something good just I now. I think we're done okay. here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody. That was a great <laughs> episode. <laughs> Beers are good. Done. Enjoy more. <laughs> now to the beer. Yes, and the abatement of the kudzu. Masters of May abatement. May we master <laughs> abatement. 
Okay, Sparky. Oh, okay. I knew if I threw it out there, someone. So would then we would be master of Fetch that right back yes, to me. Yes, that's true. Yes. Masters of our own domain. Oh, yes. right. That's right. That it is. Okay. That Twelve it is. inches at a time. A lot of beers, guys. It's true. Yes. A day, even. Twelve inches a day. <clears throat> so I wish. In getting <laughs> slow, slow but steady. Yeah. So Laugh in getting into the Zabulon beers that we're going to be talking about. Um, Zebulon's little package insert here, which a I thought was really rad. Yeah. For those of you that don't know about it, um, when Zebulon packaged their these four beers that we're going to talk about, it's part of the relics, the lost and forgotten beer styles, and um, the text and recipes were courtesy of Ron Pattinson. Yes, who is a legend, mm-hmm. a legend. Oh, a legend. cool! So it has the recipes in there too. Well, not yeah, the recipes, sort of. but his books, his blog and books do. Did it cover that? Okay, that's yeah. cool, but man. He nice. just kind of gives a little uh, 411 on the style. Very cool, man. Yeah. You don't get that with he's all a neat, beers. He's a neat guy. Yeah. He's a good historian. That's solid. He, yeah. yeah, that he is. Um, so, here we go. All right, good old boy Dave. You want to talk about the first beer? Um. Yeah, sure. Okay, October beer. Circa 1750. Ah, Jesus. The the strongest beer of its time. (coughs) Brewed brewed with huge amounts of floor malted stuff, uh, things, and East Kent Golden Hops. Then barrel aged with... Ooh, what does that say? Brett. Brett. <laughs> For seven months before <laughs> bottling, 12.2% ABV. Jeez. What was the beer called again? <laughs> <laughs> October up. beer. The beer was called October Shut beer. Up. Floor, <laughs> floor malted Maris Otter malt okay, is what that so, was. There you go. There Shush you go. It. Yeah. Uh, this is a huge beer. Yeah. Uh, starts very malty sweet, almost under attenuated, and then has a huge alcohol bite and hop bittering finish. To me, we, oui. I was not sure that I enjoyed it, but I will drink more of it and find out. We'll be right back after this brief interlude. Rolling clouds and crashing surf Iridescent dunes reflecting By the light of a rising glowing moon Seashore mesmerizing Night breeze hypnotizing We've come across these back roads none too soon Look to the left, to the right Keep your eyes on the road, my darling Wondering if we're only passing through Open roads and open windows My hand is yours forever, sweet love Welcome back, everyone. So today is a special episode because we are talking about some old ancient ales and ancient recipes that we're kind of bringing to light. Speaking of ancient, mm. Caperton. So um, <laughs> yes. since wow. you were the I'm only old. one of us closest to being alive in 1750, yes. how do you like the October beer? I agree with what you said for the most part. It tasted, a, it, I thought it smelled great, actually. It, it was kind of it syrupy does. sweet. Kind of old socks. It, it, a little, maybe a little bit of funkiness, but... But on the, it just tasted unfinished to me as well. Yeah. Was which is chief, weird for a twelve percent beer to taste unfinished. I think a little time on the shelf I wrote might improve this beer. <clears throat> right. It gets better though as it opens up. But, but a weird um, bitterness, weird. It was an odd, odd style. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm unfortunately this is a weird beer to start with. It was. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think I mean at twelve point one percent you could totally age it up and yeah. I bet it do some cool yeah. stuff. And hold a sit on it for a year and see what it yeah. turns into. Maybe yeah. you know it might go to November, December by that point. You know. True. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Fancy. What did we? Uh, what did we oh, rate this beer? Yeah. Is that what you're trying I, to get I guess, at? There, yeah, buddy? sure. It was a three over one. We gave it a three. It a three yes. Uh, uh, so yes. It's generous. So good. Oh. Out of the way. Okay. 
Um, number two beer. So this was. Um, I'm going to give a little brief <laughs> description. We should have talked to somebody that liked the she October said number beer. two. I kind of bashed it a little bit. No, anyway. no, it was fine. Okay. You were fine. Okay. You were very yeah, diplomatic. No, okay, you're fine. Sorry. Wow. Um, Sorry. That mic's going to hate you. I'm just, uh, <laughs> wow. Okay. So here's a little brief description about this next beer before um, to introduce it before. Good old boy Caperton talks about it. Mm. The legendary also beer that genuinely was brewed for Arctic expeditions. That's what this is. At least in the 19th century. The beer continued to be brewed well into the 20th century, albeit at a much lower gravity. Because the gravity on this particular one is high. 11. Yes. So, let's look at what Arctic Ale was. Um, For once, there's a reasonable description. It's brown, it's vinous, and it's nutty. And it's been around, um, and this is still sound as a bell after 13 years in the bottle. Wow. That's a go. strong That's British a, beer, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Dang. It's a is. beer with fists. Yeah. Fists of fury. Which is why they used a really good band to go with it. Uh, which band was this one? The Damned. The Damned. I'll be damned. Yeah. So, good old boy Caperton, please talk about this beer now. Okay. Well, um... I was a bit surprised by this beer. I'm um, it snuck up on you. It snuck up on me, and and I and I liked it right away. Um, it was a little a little bit of funk on the on the nose. So the smell had a little bit of uh, I don't know, kind of caramelly, kind of nutty, kind of funky, a little bit. Kind of um, toffee. Yeah. Kind of toffee. Yeah. yeah. It Some was, raisins on the nose. So yep. On the and, nose, uh, but not in the taste. And and, and I thought that it tasted like a. I wrote a. Big bowl of boozy dried fruit. This one Do wrote. we have that? We we can we have sign that. Me up. Raisin, yeah. Down. raisin, plum. You know, like uh, uh, yeah. Man, that's but a uh, but it but it's not super sweet. It finishes out kind of dry. And right, right. Uh, and I, I really I did I really liked. Yeah, this I dug this one. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're going on an Arctic expedition, I think this is like you better be yeah, Arctic, you know how, yeah. yeah, you know how like brandy warms you up. I think this is yeah. the beer version so of that. So bring your Saint Bernard yeah. with a barrel around it and a snack full of Arctic beer. Yeah. Perfect. 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 Yes. Yeah. And we rated this beer a four. Yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> I would concur with that. So the next one from Zebulon Arson Ales is the Kopusa. Kopusa. And forgive me for not being German or knowing how to say this. <laughs> Why couldn't you be German? Cockbusser. Yeah. Cockbusser. Cockbusser. Oh, <laughs> cockbusser beer. So this is one of many lost North German top fermenting beer styles. Mm-hmm. It originated mm-hmm. in the Silesian town of Kottbusch. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Which is about sure. halfway between Berlin and Dresden, just 10 miles from the border with Poland. Yeah, I was going to say oh, that. Oh, that caught Bush. Yeah. yeah. Man. yeah. And it, yeah. Right. Okay. Makes more sense now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, no. It's no, it just clicked. Yeah. Sure. And like many other North German styles, mm. this was a white beer or a Weiss beer, as it's very clean, very mm. clear, very mm. blonde. Very Aryan. Yes. yes. Um, it Yada did not mean second. Yeah, and it did not mean wheat beer as it does today, because these Weiss beers no, can be wheat. Did, did no. it did something no. a lot more nefarious, didn't it? It did, oh, yes. Just, where am I oh. going with this? Sorry. One characteristic. The master race. <laughs> yes. Yeah, One characteristic of this beer. That, <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't. <laughs> we went there. <laughs> it's the sourness um, that's derived from lactic acid bacteria. That See. Yeah, so it's almost Wait, got that kind of the... lambicky Berliner Weissy mm. kind of ness to it. Yeah, ness. Yes, yes. A lot of ness. Okay, so for me, I like this beer a lot. Um, the color on it is is super light. Nose wise, really not a lot, not a lot going on. Maybe a little acidiness of it. Yeah, but um, but really not much. And it's just, it's such a nice, crisp, clean beer. I, I know that sounds weird. Weird. That is weird. That was so weird. No, I mean for the style, I get a little bit of like um, honey and yep. um, like almost heathery. It, it kind of reminds me of a frouch in a way. It's kind of almost like a Ritter Guts, though the Berliner traditional Berliner yeah. Weiss. Yeah, because, because that is a little sweeter. They're sweeter, yep. and you get honey out of those too. So those Germans, they're oh, sweet. The they, Germans. They didn't want people to know how sweet they are. So. 
There you go. There it is. Yeah. Right and we happened. rated this one a three. Three. German lawnmower beer. Do you know what you call a, uh, a German who's in a bad mood? Sauerkraut. <laughs> oh, that was. We just got banned in Germany. Ah, how did You're I welcome, miss everybody. That? How did wow. I miss that? Yeah. Wow. Sparky, you crazy. I know, girl. So crazy. No, 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 go past this. Past this part. In fact, never play this again. <laughs> Good old boy, Drew. Would you like to talk about the next beer? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So, uh, the next beer is the Gradziski. It is brewed with a 100% oak smoked wheat malt and Polish Junga hops. It's mm. very light in color with a crisp hoppy finish and an amazingly smoky aroma. Clocking in at 3.7% ABV and 40 IBU. I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't normally like smoky beers. I've uh, I've had a fair amount of Roushes, and I feel like I'm drinking an ashtray. When I read smoke on this one, I was afraid that's what I was going to run into. But it yeah. was much more muted than I would. Very subtle. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah, and it's crazy because <clears throat> you don't really smell the smoke, but you taste the right. smoke on this one. I wouldn't. I would not agree with an amazingly smoky aroma from the the liner notes. Of sure. Course. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I and and I think I love Roush beers, and I love. Like, I love smoke, and I would probably lick the inside of my smoker if nobody was licking. But I, I did not care You've for this. You're not supposed to you? do that. And I, I'm the dissenting that. opinion. Right. I know. I'm saving it for later. But, um, but like, I think I got, like, palate shot from this because I wasn't expecting a smoked beer. And for that, this was the first thing that I tasted, and it was kind of getting slapped in my head with menthol. So it was mm. kind of, it kind of threw me a little bit. Yeah. I taste uh, some apple in it, too. Ooh, so it's like smoke and apple. Mm-hmm. Or Smapple? Mm. Man, I could go for Is a that Smapple right now. Copyrighted? I Trademarks? No. I kind of like a little <laughs> weird, like, lime-like tartness sort of. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can yeah. see what you're talking about there. Yeah. That was kind of strange. Right. Picking up what you're laying yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. But I, I I like the smoke on this. I, yeah, it's too. a very easy drinking, yeah. very smooth beer. Um, yeah, very pleasant. Tasty. Even. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah, other people should start burning. I don't think, think I could drink cool. a ton of this, though. What'd we give this beer? We rated it a four. Uh, uh, so maybe I could drink a ton of it. I don't know. I could try. There's only one way to I'll know for another. sure, they Dave. Send me a ton of it, and we'll find out. It's true. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so that was it for Zebulon Artisan Ales. Thank you, Zebulon. Yep. They were good. They yeah. were good. So now we're going to move on to a collaboration between Scratch Brewing from Scratch Ava, Brewing. Illinois, that we all know and love very Yay. well, and then Jester King from the heart of Texas. Good old boy Sparky, would oh, you like to talk about Sparky. the Stein beer? Sparky. Yeah. So, okay. So, Scratch slash Jester King Stein beer. Stein beer is the collaboration we did with Jester King last summer. This experimental beer never touched stainless steel. We mashed in oak barrels, boiled with hot granite rocks in barrels, and then we fermented and aged the beer. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? We fermented and aged the beer in a red wine barrel. The beer was bittered and flavored entirely with plants other than hops, including hyssop, basil, wild oregano, and juniper. This is a fascinating tart concoction, unlike anything you've ever tasted and reminiscent of herbal digestives. I totally agree with that. I think yeah. I, I think I was the one person, and and just to be clear, like I wish that uh, Underberg came in like the big gulp <laughs> bottle, <laughs> like screw that yeah. noise or fern it. I love it. In a box. I did yeah. not like this beer <sighs> yeah. at all. Matter of fact, on my notes, I wrote, I think this could be used for like medical treatment or iodine <laughs> or band aids. And I wish. Lots of booze. Is that medically safe? <laughs> Pour um, on a wound. So I'm I, willing to volunteer. To I, you're, yeah. Let's find yeah. it. Let's start yeah. the treatment now. Yeah. So I, I did yeah. not care for this, and I know I am in the minority at this table, so you may feel free to get out. Wrong. hurl yeah. insults wrong. and cut okay. off my mic. Be gone. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I just, I don't know, man. I, I um, Yeah, I thought it was, yeah. It's herby. 
It was very, very I thought it was a little bit herbaceous. acetic. It's a little sour. I thought it was a little acetic myself. Yeah. That yeah. was my uh, hang up is, with it. Yeah, and this is interesting coming from a guy that loves to make cocktails. I love mm-hmm. cocktails. Yeah. I love lambics. Yeah. And I yeah. love herbal stuff. Yeah. So I don't know why this didn't click with me, but I don't know. Maybe it's just too good for I did for cut your myself. I am going to put it on here <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. It's too good for you, Sparky. <laughs> <laughs> so many things in life are, like Mrs. Sparks, like the uh, rest of everything in my I life. I think it's yeah. worth saying that that scratch Scratch as a brewery have have seemed to have mastered the art of brewing Stein beers. Like yes, this. is that they, their yes. thing? That's, they really that's, that's that is one of their things. Yeah, they're they're yeah. yeah. They got lots of little pallets of rocks laying around there. They, they're ready to heat up at a moment's notice. It's a really cool yeah. kind of way that's done too. It, it really is. It's a neat, no, I mean, it's a neat it's, style. It's an awesome. I, I did like this beer though. I did. I, I love the yeah. aroma on it. Yeah. I just think it, it smells great. You know, so, I want more. So unique. That's, I yeah. say this is the first of this style I've had, but I, yeah. I want more. Yeah. I yeah, it's it's really stunning. Um and so completely different than anything you've ever had. I it's very easy to drink though too. I mean, it's just a good marriage of like the best gin meets yeah. meets a scratch beer. And finally <laughs> a, <laughs> finally a collaboration that we can but a little like. more sour than the typical beer from yeah, scratch. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think it was gonna, a little bit too I'm acidic for me. And, it, and yeah. it is, you're right. It's, if it's if I had to fault one sort of unbalance here, it would You get be a little, little bit in the jaw, you know, the yeah. little, little, little bit. I got to tell you guys, I can't stop light. thinking about Underberg in big bottles now. Why yeah. isn't that a thing? Like, <laughs> that should be a the, thing. Have you, you should make it a thing. I guarantee you it's some sort of tariff. Yeah, I'm down. With those gummy bears. I guarantee you it's some sort of volume <laughs> oh, tariff. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. But think of the planet. Those tiny little <laughs> bottles. Yeah. Agreed. And those yeah. tiny caps I keep saving up. Seriously. How about one giant cap gets me the glass instead of <laughs> What are you going to do with all those little caps, Sparky? <laughs> you, trade, the, you can turn them in. You turn the them glass. in. They give you free stuff. If uh, you get like a special. <laughs> like, he wants the glass. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'm like up to like 50 or 60 right yeah. now. I think. Like a hundred gets you the free please, Underberg glass. Please send your <laughs> Underberg caps to. No, I'm serious. Oh, dude, or oh, Underberg, oh, just sending us Underberg. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm ready. You I know? get it off of Amazon, which may or may not be legal, but it's so cheap. Do it. <laughs> Shh. Free advertisement for Underberg and Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright right there. You're welcome, America. The opinions we, just wow. expressed we, by good old boy Sparky did not reflect those. Yes. <laughs> 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 okay. Productions. okay, last yep. thing. There's one of the things you can send in your caps for. There's like a bandolier. Like you can wear no like way. a bandolier. Oh, Underberg, Underberg, Underberg bandolier. Yeah. Yeah. That would be handy. Nice. At, at, a, at a festival? Yeah. I want to help You'd you be that, that guy, that, wouldn't you? De- yeah. I want you, to have, <laughs> I want you to have that. I'm ready to be that guy. We will work on that right for on. you. The yes. Under goals. Ambassador squad to Nashville. Squad goals. <laughs> Sex squad goals. Nice. Well, speaking of that, what did we rate this beer? <laughs> don't even we know what beer we're talking five. about. Five. We gave it a five. We Holy gave cow. it a five. Yes. Yeah. You were over right. everyone. Hard. Foomph. Hard. Foomph. Yeah. Now let's get Foomph. to a scratch beer that Sparky actually did like. <laughs> okay. Next up is the scratch uh, kvass. Yes. So it's a bottle conditioned sour ale brewed with loaves of house rye bread sliced and toasted in our brick oven. The bread was sour mashed overnight before adding rye and barley from our friends at Sugar Creek Malt in Indiana, boiled with caraway seeds and fermented mm. with our rye sourdough culture. Get carried away. I really enjoyed the hell out of this beer. And this is the first scratch beer I've had that I really enjoyed. Uh, the first one I had was like a cherry sour that tasted like dirt and sadness. Um, and then this. <laughs> He's been sadness. he's been steady that with that description as well. It, yeah. that, no, those are actual tasting. Yeah. They are. That's, they really were. And I'll I'll never forget it. But this is delicious. Yeah. And I don't even like caraway. I hate like anise and licorice and caraway. I get no caraway. I from get this, none so. of that. No, but, I and I don't even really get the maybe a little bit of spiciness. There's in the no, rye. I get the rye. I get There's the rye. No anus in this but, beer. But dude, I <laughs> I freaking love this beer, and yeah. it is great. And uh, yeah, delightful. I even get like some stone fruit from it. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. A little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm all on board with this one. Anybody else? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I think we all on, liked yeah. it. Yeah. Get on the Kvass train with Sparky. <laughs> it's yeah. a mess to brew, apparently. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like I, like a million piles of rye bread, bread. toast. Yeah. And, Kvass wants it. It is. And painful. apparently, here's a 
odd little Mine was F- not this good, though. Did you know that they, they actually toast it before? They yeah, you, mash you got it. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. develop those sugars, right? Yeah, you oh, get those flavors. I did not oh. know that. Concentrates the yeah. sugars that so that sense. the starter it makes nope. sense. Oh, wow. Nope. Okay. But I, I, thought, could, I thought it was just an unnecessary step that they sort of took just to go the extra mile. But oh, it's no, part of the process. No, it's necessary, yeah. Gotcha. But I could see how this could be a part of the fabric of, like, Eastern European, you know, yeah, cuisine. Yeah, 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 I mean, just, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It fits right I mean, in with the diet. Yeah. This is their version of those um, big breweries that I can't discuss, you know, that yeah. are on a lot of people's tables that don't drink craft beer. <laughs> But like uh, a Those. lot of like really <laughs> traditional kvass, like what's the ABV on this one? Um, it's pretty low. It's like four point one or four point. Yes, this is four point one. So like a, a lot of the really traditional ones are even as low as like two percent. Yeah, really, wow. they, my they, kind of beer, baby. They weren't made to be like beer, beer. It was like yeah. sustenance. What you drink? Yeah, right. it was what you know, right. It was so like that you didn't get it's, the plate. It's a way, yeah, yeah, it's a way to <laughs> make bread and beer yeah, of grains its day. last longer. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Use your reuse your leftovers. Yeah, but definitely like a palate cleanser type of beer. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. I'm down. And we rated this guy. What did we give it? A four. Four. Uh, Absolutely. uh, Yay, Scratch. (laughs) (laughs) You've redeemed yourself. So now we're going to, um, the next one that we're going to talk about is from Steel Spring. Spring? Yeah, and that's in... Carborough, North Carolina. Somewhere. Yep. Yep. Somewhere. Yep. Somewhere. And um, and Fontaflora, which is also from North Morganton, right? Morganton, Morganton, North Carolina. Yes, this beer is called Handsome Angeline, and oh, this is she was a handsome lass. Yeah, and this yeah. is also a kvass, um, but a slightly different kvass. Mm-hmm. This w- this is a Piedmont style kvass, meaning Piedmont is the county, I believe, that um, they're from. Piedmont Co. Yeah. So it is made with rye sourdough bread mm-hmm. from Chicken Bridge Bakery. <coughs> I like that name. Chicken Bridge. <laughs> Grapefruit. Why does the chicken cross the bridge? <laughs> yeah, yeah. To get a beer. Because it can't swim. Oh, but you know, looking at the ingredients that place to the Piedmont region of Italy, uh, the pine. Uh, I mean, that's, I, I just the finally got that. The fennel and pine needles yeah, and yeah. all that? That's yeah. where that, you're so smart. Oh, there you go. There you go. They, they World double, traveler. doubled up there. There it is, yeah. So, um. I was, was going to say that, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> exactly. They do have pine trees in North Carolina. We'll be back that's in just true. a minute that's to true. discuss this beer. It's true. It's not just the destination. But baby, the whole elation Riding down this lover's avenue As slow as a willow blows Or as fast as the world wind grows We glide beneath the stars in cobalt blue Look to the left, to the right Keep your eyes on the road, my darling, wondering if we're only passing through. Open roads and open windows, my hand is yours forever, sweet love. Our eyes ahead on these back roads with a view. Hey, welcome back, everyone. So we're talking about a lot of old recipes, old beer styles, and kind of reigniting these old styles that have gone dormant for a while. Yes, we're talking about history, and not just kudzu history. Exactly. So this beer that we are talking about currently is from Steel String and Fontaflora, their collaborative kvass called Handsome Angeline. Um, and we were starting to discuss some of the ingredients in it. And it's essentially rye sourdough bread and some grapefruit, some local fennel, and some for- forage pine needles. And then um, they use the sourdough starter instead of a typical yeast strain, which I, which makes sense. Yeah. Um, 
I really, really enjoyed this. I think I'm in the minority on this one verse versus the kvass from scratch that we just talked about. But I just thought it had an extra element to it. Um, maybe adding the fennel instead of the caraway seed. Yeah. And maybe a little bit of the pithiness of the grapefruit. Very pithy. Mm. It was a little more complicated, for sure. In a good way. I mean, but, I mean complicated. Angeline yeah. was not complex. only handsome. Complex. Complex. A little more Enjoyable. complex. Yeah. Yeah. Angeline you. was not only handsome. She was also, you know, a very complex, deep individual. That's yeah. goes... And yes. still a tart. True. Oh, 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 They're the most complicated. Saucy, saucy tart. Yeah. They're the most complicated guys. They are. They are. But it, it was kind of sauerkrauty for me. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you mean a disgruntled oh, German? <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing it back. <laughs> well played. But sir. I liked it because of that. You yeah. know, yeah. it yeah. just I, to me this even more so than the scratches. Just something that I could see have an everyday um, a big old glass of sauerkraut juice. You know, as a ta- <laughs> as a table beer with. Um, <laughs> And this was lower ABV. This was 3.3%. Yeah. Uh, it was but, a little more effervescent than the scratch, in my opinion, as well. Just lighter. It I, had I, a, what's the word? Umami? I mean, it it, oh, really? it, it has really? a little bit of foody kind of... Who's mommy? That might not be the right word. Is that that's like meaty, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah, it's more savory. like a meaty, yeah. Yeah. mushroomy. It's not, kind not, of... not, not, it's not so much that, but just like you said, it, it just, um, it's got more of a food-like quality to it um it does yeah yeah i could see that eh. i just eh. I, I just feel like that this goes even more it, it goes well more so with the european foods like yeah. the it, oh man yeah like if you did this with like a reuben on rye like oh, holy yeah. cow yeah. you get the kraut yeah. you yeah. get yeah the funkiness of the Swiss cheese and then the rye. The more I'm drinking this. Why? I'm, I'm, oh, man. No, I want some yeah. mustard. Yeah. I know, yeah. fennel, right? fennel seed. Yeah. yeah. Speaking, yeah. speaking of which, mustard. I, I love the Reuben sandwich. It's like my favorite sandwich of all time. I think you're totally right. Totally not kosher. Mm-hmm. But I, I would prefer like a great spicy mustard on it over Thousand Island dressing. That's I'm gonna where have to, yeah. I'm going to fl- I'm I'm have to flag, flag you on that one. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be with Sparky on this yeah, one. Yeah, that's kind of where I am. I'm flagging you too then. Yeah. Flagged, but having this style beer, or and even this particular beer with something like that, or oh. I'm thinking of something like Halupki, where or as people call it, um, yeah, it's in a blanket. Are. Oh man, <laughs> you know what I mean? Where yeah. it's the yeah. Can we just have an episode where I eat the Reuben and drink this beer, sure. and just the sound of me eating that? Because I think that. That's got some value. With a little video and facial yeah. expressions. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. I think we sure. need to... We can put it next to Tiny Hamsters. Yeah. We could have a Ruben. mustard, <laughs> Thousand Island sort yeah. of... Like Ruben Showdown. showdown. Yeah, let's let's yeah. find out once and for all. I think it'd be worth spending more time on some of these beers talking about the pairings and stuff. I mean, I'm not... Yeah. 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 What, yeah. what would you... Would what ancient sp- foods... <laughs> mm. well, well, I just had the 1750 beer with yeah. some gruel. Some, I'm gonna uh, guess, uh, nice. I'm going to guess some a lot of these yeah. older beers yeah. were, were, I mean, yeah. They are they, sustenance. Yeah, they are they food. Were, yeah. They were consumed Stewed with food. Stewed pigeon. Yeah. 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 They didn't sit around like we do and... You know, you got to <laughs> sniff, come in, drink, tall boys. And, yeah. come That's in, right. Yeah, you gotta come in from the field, have a glass of beer, and then get, get right. your butt back out there. That's and, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean they they couldn't shotgun stuff back then. I feel like we've really come a long way. Yeah, I think you a society. Could, <laughs> but I think you could gravity shotgun something. You like totally if, could. You know, but then, have you know, a guy did, with a bucket standing above you. You can do that. shotgun sort of gravity anyway. It, it is. It's just a but combination but it's, of gravity. It's like the gravity bong kind pressure, of thing yeah, going on. Pressure, yeah. <laughs> Under pressure, and they didn't have you know soda straws, so you can't you know if you're gonna you uh, know if you're gonna uh, shotgun a beer, uh, they, uh, if you sparky. think about the okay. ancient Mesopotamians, oh here we go, the that's true. They, 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 they drink did with the straw. straw that's correct. The crap that was floating. That's right. You got the, the crap dark. at the bottom, and you had crap at the top, and that uh, straw you, let so you, you get right to the middle. Yeah, that's history, <laughs> folks. <laughs> the dark side. You just got smarter. Dark side yeah. of history. That's where beer That's right. came from. Yeah, the, those pots full of grains. The the necessity is the mother of all. Yeah. You know, you, there's some there's some historians that that will tell you it's not the uh, you know move to an agrarian lifestyle that that was really uh, that was because so they could get grain. They could get grain beer. beer. To exactly, beer. Yep. that was the thing. Yeah. I believe that. I believe that too. I I'm, have my motivation. I, want to believe. I have <laughs> contemplated moving to a different city for beer. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Wow. Okay. Well, Does your wife know me... that? I was going to tell her. Okay. <laughs> but as long thanks, as it's a good for scene, that up, Sparky. <laughs> Just got real. <laughs> okay, let's rein it back in here for a second. Uh, okay. It, is, there, is that even kind of, possible? <laughs> <laughs> kind of, probably not. Bit of flight of fancy there. 12.1%, yeah. 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 yes. 11.8%. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so the rating for this steel string brewing in Fonte Flor is a one. No. Oh. 100. We gave Handsome Angelina three. And Trey. So, if she's a three, that means she's still not very attractive. Never mind. Do they have to be? Boy. <laughs> they don't have to be, <laughs> but she is wearing a steel string. You know what? If Ace. you put down a couple bottles of that 1750 uh, <laughs> it's true. beer. Yeah, she's going to three. three a, um, a, a you three. see, I've been drinking from yeah. a ceramic urn through a straw, yeah. and I'm ready to throw down. <laughs> A three can become a nine pretty quickly after wow. some 1750 October that way, beer. Does anybody yeah, want I, my October beer? I want Speaking you to pound of that. <laughs> no. Pound it. No. Shotgun? Gravity? I'm solid. Yeah, gravity, gravity shotgun. Gravity shotgun that. Back with me in November. <laughs> talk. I thought we had two more beers, but it, I just didn't drink the October beer. Oh. <laughs> but we can I'll drink, drink it now. Okay. Sorry, Mike. I'll we drink it We can go now. back and talk about it again. Yeah. I'll drink it okay. Now. The last on the list is the... Yeah, I'll drink that later. Is the Fry Geist. Yeah. And we, we actually did before... Save the we, last for last... We did a Gruet episode before, which was originally was because, um, you know, people who like beer, but they can't take hops like they have a hop allergy or yes. something like that. So there are a lot of beers <clears throat> that don't use hops. Most of them aren't good. But well, historically, they had to buy them from the church, right? Gruet was the that was the whole. Yeah, history I think of yeah, it. they had the yeah. lockdown on the. They yeah. sure did. On well, the whole Reinsk. About thing didn't that affect it as well? Yeah, yeah. However the heck you pronounce it. Yeah, I think that might have been a byproduct of the Protestant Reformation and breaking away from the Catholic Church controlling Martin Luther and correct. stuff like that. What the hell yeah, yeah. Are you guys talking about? Martin Luther had a hop allergy, so he was like, "No, damn it, we're <laughs> going to." Free up the group. Like I thought pieces. I knew the history here. I don't guess. I don't. I, yeah. yeah. Okay. But I do know, like in uh, in England, just made like, stuff up right now. Just as hops were becoming more prolific, <laughs> yeah. they would call uh, if it was brewed with hops, they would call it ale. Ale. But Correct. if it was without hops, it was called beer. Correct. So that was the uh, distinction. And then there were ale wives. Because Gruet predated <laughs> the uh, use of hops, right? Right. right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was. Hops, yeah. I had the timeline right here. Yes, you're correct. Okay. okay. So there's actually a nun was one of the first people who really uh, espoused on about how the antibacterial and preservative. Mm. She's a hop uh, head. Yeah, she was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It always yeah. starts with a nun. Ninety IBUs or nothing for her. None your business. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's a bad habit. You should break it. But I love Gruitz. I do too. I, I do. do. I mean, if they're good, I drink. Yeah. I drink more than my share. New Belgium probably. had a pretty good Gruet there for a while. And, I don't uh, normally like Gruets. Yeah, yeah. I may be a the, lot of I, scratch like beers. A lot of scratch table. beers fall uh, into that they category. Have to be, yeah. 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 Do they yeah. taste like yeah. dirt and sadness too? Yeah, some do. Maybe. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Some of us like the taste of sadness. Sorry, the taste of sadness. We're in a yes. better place now, Scratch. I'm oh sorry. my gosh! Okay, so let's discuss this beer. Um, this is a collaboration, and it's a combination of Freigeist from yeah. Germany, yeah, yeah. Yep. and Kissmeyer from this is Kiss what? Kiss my ear. Kiss my Hello. ear. Kiss my ear. Better than Kiss my ear. From Denmark. Denmark. And Danish then, and solo. Good cookies there. Yes. Good cookies. Oh, yeah. Tins. Mm-hmm. They make nice tins. Tins, they do. And then solo from Greece. Um, this is a traditional dark Groot beer. How low? Which is brewed solo. with... Solo. <laughs> <laughs> and it's brewed with lavender, rose hips, yeah. spruce twigs, yeah. elderberries, yeah. Rose, her and hips, more. Man. Yeah. So in other yeah. words, what I raked up in my front yard, basically. Got it. Yep, basically. Check. Now, they also did a pale version of this, which we don't have, so I probably shouldn't have brought it up. This is the dark. It's yeah. This light. is the dark, yes. This is the dark. Yeah, yeah, it has less calories and... Yes, and half the carbs. Much more sessionable. Less filling. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well... <laughs> 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 well, Sorry. we've yeah. done it again. There you go. You're welcome. Stone to silence. Sorry. Sorry. Wow. Okay. All right then. So it is very dark. Yeah. It is um, very light on the tongue. It's delicious. It's, it is. It's, it's not thick and chewy. 
in that regard. But right. um, there is a lot going on in this beer. There is. Um, a lot that is... Not good. Not what I would prefer. <laughs> I mean, okay, so... There's notes on this somewhere. You, you have to is. really want to drink herbs. Yeah. Like I thought it was weird because I like smelled it chocolate. It smelled on chocolatey. Those. I did too. That was weird. Yeah. 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 It, it yeah. smells chocolatey, and I think that's from the dark malt. It's got to be from but the dark malt. It's absolutely right? from the dark malt. The, but the chocolate does not go into the flavor for not me. Not at all. It tastes does not. It's not like at all. Smarties, no. and I think that's from the the mm. yeast. I get some or the Smarties that were mixed in with the spruce twigs. Yeah. Spruce and elderberry, big Ooh, time. Spruce Smarties. Mm. Spruce and elderberry, big time. Spruce guys. Um, Sparties. I'm and gonna... I like spruce beers, though. That's just yeah. it. You yeah. know, but this one was, there was just so much going on. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you, you can't. You it can't, muddled yeah. everything. You yeah. can't settle on one flavor. It's like there's 15 right. different things here, and they're all like. Can you imagine oh, there's the rose hips. The complexity so the... actually you becomes more simple. imagine drinking 16 ounces yeah. of this? Because it just blows together. Yeah, I'll together. take a pint. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Is that even a thing where the complexity just becomes yeah. so intense that it just so is so blurry? Yeah. It just it's a train everything yeah. sort of it, simplifies yeah, that, that, out. You know? A cacophony on yeah. a lot of these yeah. beers. Yeah. You can't yeah. pick any voice out. It's just, no, it's, I, and just I think in this case it's lavender. No, not 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 at all. No, I don't get that. No. It's like somebody dropped their spice rack yeah. into the yeah. boil hey, kettle. You know. It is a good name, though. It we'll is. give them that. Gruet Vibration. And it's a hell of a collaboration. Three breweries. Yeah. 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 That was yeah. Germans and Danish who came up with that. So yeah. that's... Yeah, give them extra points. Let but what would you pair this with? I mean, this is not something that you could drink alone. Um, I would pair this with a good beer. <laughs> 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 that was and then I was, was unexpected. Just that was yeah. unexpected. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was very that I mean, caught that me was, off guard. That was there. uncharacteristically that caught me off uh, guard. vicious. Wow. Yeah. That's and I really, funny. I know, I, I actually kind of like this. Um, I liked it better cold. I think it was better when it was colder because the all the myriad of flavors were yeah. more Muted. compacted in. Yeah. But as it is it sat here and it's warmed up, everything's just coming out. And a lot of times that's what I prefer. I want all the big flavors to come out and show you what the beer is. But when there's like forty things here and they don't always cooperate right. with each other. Really a cool yeah. bottle though and a great name. So Which we're I gonna think, give it like those yeah. things. Yeah. It definitely so, is. Did Juliana, we, did we what rate it? was your opinion on this beer like what'd you what do you think you're you know I, you got a palate i do have a palate this palette got a heck of a palate this palette was confusing <laughs> though uh, it was yeah it was very confused because colder it was um i hate to say one-dimensional but it was very one-dimensional and as it warmed up it's just it's 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 gotten overwhelming to the point of it just being astringent so obviously this is a beer that you got to drink cold um, the colder the better yeah. on that yeah. but I don't it, I just can't ever imagine like you know what give me lots more of that yeah. I want to see you shotgun one of these and oh, I, I will and I'm just <laughs> wondering no if the knee. reason why they even made this was like you know just it's an old beer it's an old style right and they didn't know about hops yet and you know somebody might have said throw an herb in or maybe mm -hmm. it was like a medicine doctor of collaborations sorts that said, are funny yeah. right you know could what you I mean? turn this poultice into a beer thank you right i mean who knows drink your medicine yeah. So Take maybe it's medicinal, you understand? Medicinal. <laughs> so and you? maybe that's what they were trying to go with. I Nailed don't. It. I, don't, I know. don't know. Yeah, but we um, we gave this a this particular beer, which poor little collaboration of dark vibrations, a two. Two. Oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. Just a little <laughs> so I'm going to say this about collaborations, and that is do it, do it. They often underwhelm. In they really my do. Opinion. Yeah. Is this is okay? It's I completely not just agree. Me. Yeah. No. They is are it because there are too many of them out there. I think I, no. I think there's too many cooks in the kitchen, and yeah. I think. Yeah. I think there's a lot of navel gazing in those situations yeah, yeah. where they're like, "Man, this is awesome!" No, it's amazing. It's thought, incredible. Nobody's I think there going. A lot of times they do it just to hang out. It's, it's yeah. more absolutely. About just out, it's yeah. a great time. Well. I've been to collab. I've been president of collaboration brews, and they're a blast. But there's not a lot of critical thinking going on. Yeah. I think in those situations. Yeah. Hey guys, what if we 
No. Yeah. No. And, and you know, I've seen some, too, like, where two breweries, like, you know, one brewery's fantastic at Saison's, another's, you know, fantastic, another, and then they make some style that's, like, completely yeah. not even close, yeah. which is really sure. disappointing. Yeah. Um, Although, they, don't, they don't give us what we want. Yeah, Although stick I'm, with what you're good at. Yeah, but, like, I, I can think of one scenario where it actually would help. So let's say you've got an established brewery that is big into Saison's, right? And they've made their name. And then there's another guy who has sort of looked up to this brewery, and they're doing the same thing, maybe slightly different. Yeah. You no, know, yeah. then yeah. that kind of collaboration yeah. could yeah. work. That, but, no, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. But anyways, okay, enough about collabs. Just in practice. Well, ladies and gents, it's going to wrap it up for today. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode, and you can catch us all of our episodes online as well as through iTunes, YouTube, or your favorite podcast app. Did I say that part too early? No, you're good. Okay. Oh, we love your feedback. And you can reach us online at info at sips, suds, and smokes.com. Our daily tasting notes flow out on Twitter and Instagram every day at sips, suds, smoke. And our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. Boom. Please take the time to rate this episode if you're listening online, and please listen to more episodes after this one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they'll, they'll, get them all. Better. they'll get better. And we like the number five. Yeah. So, I want to thank all of you guys for being here. Good old boy Dave. Hey, check me out on Instagram, at good old boy Dave, for my 60-second beer reviews. Good old boy Caperton. Hey, check me out at area tap rooms occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> Good old boy Sparky. I'm really sorry, Germany. Take me back. <laughs> and good old boy Drew. I'm just so glad to be here. Drew. This is good old gal Juliana. Thank you so much for joining. Keep on chuggling and we'll catch you next time. One Tan Hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time. <laughs> <laughs>